we suddenly noticed this walrus um, crawling across the floor on his stomach. A new zero on the stage. Sounds crazy, no? But in our little village of Barnes and Noble, we will meet people connected who knew Zero Mostel who worked with him. Which of us can really say we have achieved as much as this woman has because she was actually on Richard M. Nixon's enemies list? <laughs> Miss Lynn Lane. What do you remember about him and his wife, Kate? Well, they were very close friends of ours. And by chance or by decision, we lived in the same apartment buildings on three different occasions. We moved and then they would like that building and then they would move and then we would move and it went that way. They were keeping um, up with the lanes. They were an incredible couple. Um, sometimes you thought they'd never lived through another day together and sometimes you thought that it was the best match that anyone had ever made. One night, in one of these apartment buildings on Central Park West, a summer evening. Bert and I were just coming home. Zero came up the street, he had just finished his performance, and he was standing there, and a man walked down Central Park West. It was quite deserted that evening. And he was staring at Zero, just staring at him. He wasn't sure who he was, but he couldn't take his eyes off him. Zero realized this, and as this man came closer, he rose up and he became the rhinoceros. <laughs> and the poor man ran screaming down the street. He was scared to death. One of my prized possessions, it was Burton's too, is a self-portrait of Zero, which is in our apartment in a very special place. Eli Wallach once said, they always say you shouldn't act with clowns, animals, or children. And when I did Rhinoceros, I felt when Zero was on stage, I was acting with a clown, an animal, and a child. So, Francis Sternhagen, did you find Zero on stage to be challenging, difficult, what? Challenging, uh -huh. but fun. He, he, there was, well, this was Ulysses in Night Town, the first, perform, first production, when he had just, this was his first uh, reappearance and Burgess Meredith directed it. And I went in, uh, in place of Annie Mira, who uh, got another job, which lasted about maybe a week. But she didn't come back. And I played uh, the nymph and about, I don't know, four or five other parts in that production. But uh, Zero had one scene in which, um, I guess as a rabbi, uh -huh. He had his back to the audience, and the rest of us had to face him sitting on a stage, squat, you know, cross-legged on stage. And of course, all he did was try to break us up. <laughs> and so our effort was trying not to break up. My husband was in a play uptown. This was down at the Rooftop Theater on Houston Street, I think, at the time, at about 2nd Avenue. And we went to a restaurant occasionally called Pilatos and sawdust on the floor and the red, white, check tablecloths. And we were sitting at our table and we suddenly noticed this walrus uh, crawling across the floor on his stomach. <laughs> Through the sawdust, came to the table and sort of latched on to Tom and said, my name is Zero. Who are you? <laughs> and Tom said, I'm Tom Carlin. Good. And he went back to his <laughs> <laughs> uh, mentioned reappearance. You're, of course, referring to the blacklist. And you knew him yeah. during that period of time, Lynn, when, yes. when, uh, when uh, do you recall any of his frustrations of being involved with the blacklist? Well, he was simply furious at the entire idea of the blacklist as um, most people I knew were. Uh, he never got over his feelings about people who had named names, and that included Jerry Robbins, with whom he was later to work in Fiddler on the Roof. Uh, Zero, um, when people worried when Robbins was going to be the director, 
um, how Zero would take it, his answer was, we of the left do not blackmail. Blacklist. Uh, blacklist. Do not Probably blacklist. Not. Similar. <laughs> we of the left do not blacklist. So he, he respected Robin's talent very much, but he despised the fact that he had named the names of his associates to the committee and caused many of them to lose their jobs. And in one case, Philip Lowe, who was a particularly close friend of the Mostels, um, he ended up committing suicide out of desperation and having lost a way to make a living and been, been blacklisted from uh, any kind of actor's employment. So yes, he cared about it a lot. Zero was always just lovely to me. And I was pregnant with my third, wearing this pink leotard. And how I got through all this. I got through it with Pauline Flanagan, who played Molly Bloom, would stand at the side of the stage with me. We, we, she, had, I guess, had come off, and then I was going to go on. And Pauline would always say, oh, darling, oh, Dr. Theater will take care of you. <laughs> Mr. Hagen wearing the leotard while pregnant. You were just ahead of your time. That's what happens all the time now. <laughs>